Hello everyone, and welcome back to BioScholar. Our cells are surrounded by a protective barrier called the plasma membrane. This membrane not only shields the cell, but also plays a crucial role in regulating the movement of substances in and out of the cell. One of its primary functions is transporting materials according to the cell's needs. Sometimes, the plasma membrane allows the passive movement of small molecules through diffusion, while at other times, it must transport larger substances in bulk to maintain cellular function. This bulk transport is a highly specialized process that ensures the cell's internal environment remains stable and supports its efficiency. In this video, we'll explore the fascinating mechanisms of bulk transport in detail. Let's dive in. Bulk transport is a fundamental process that allows cells to move large quantities of materials across their cell membranes. Unlike simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion, which involve the movement of small molecules across the lipid bilayer, bulk transport mechanisms are responsible for the transportation of larger particles or significant amounts of substances. There are two primary types of bulk transport across the cell membrane, endocytosis and exocytosis. Let's first talk about endocytosis. Endocytosis is a fundamental cellular process that allows cells to take in substances from their external environment. This process involves the formation of vesicles by invaginating the cell's plasma membrane, enclosing extracellular material and transporting it into the cell's interior. There are several types of endocytosis. First, I will discuss phagocytosis. Cells engulf large particles like bacteria or cellular debris. Specialized immune cells, such as macrophages, use phagocytosis to help defend the body against pathogens. Next is pinocytosis. This is like cellular drinking. Cells engulf small droplets of extracellular fluid containing dissolved molecules, such as nutrients and ions. Last one is receptor-mediated endocytosis. This process is highly specific. Cell surface receptors bind to specific molecules called as ligands, and the receptor ligand complex is internalized in clathrin coated vesicles. The general process of endocytosis involves the following steps. The plasma membrane invaginates, forming a pocket around the target material. The pocket pinches off from the plasma membrane, forming a vesicle. The vesicle is often coated with proteins like clathrin in the case of clathrin-mediated endocytosis. The vesicle containing the internalized material is transported into the cell's interior. In the case of clathrin-coated vesicles, the clathrin coat is removed. Depending on the type of material taken up, the vesicle may fuse with early endosomes, late endosomes, or lysosomes. In some cases, the material is digested within the cell, or processed for recycling. Endocytosis is essential for nutrient uptake, immune responses, and maintaining cellular homeostasis. It allows cells to adapt to changes in their environment, and is crucial for various physiological functions. Now, let's talk about exocytosis. Exocytosis is a fundamental cellular process that involves the active transport of molecules, typically large and often membrane-bound vesicles, from within a cell to the cell's exterior. It allows cells to release a variety of substances, such as neurotransmitters, hormones, enzymes, and waste products. 
It is the opposite of endocytosis, where cells internalize substances through processes like phagocytosis or pinocytosis. Exocytosis, believe it or not, is a crucial event happening in your cells every day. Imagine your cells as bustling cities with tiny workers inside. In this city, we have three main characters. First, secretory vesicles. These are like delivery trucks filled with important cargo. Second, cell membrane or plasma membrane. Our city's border control, regulating what comes in and goes out. And the third one is cytoskeleton. Think of it as the city's roads, helping vesicles navigate to their destination. Exocytosis happens in several stages, just like a well-choreographed dance. Our delivery trucks, or secretory vesicles, are loaded with goodies like proteins and lipids. They cruise through the city streets, carried by special motor proteins along the cytoskeleton roads. The vesicles park at their designated spots, getting ready to make their special deliveries. It's showtime. The vesicle membrane fuses with the city border, which is the cell membrane, releasing its contents outside. The cell shares its cargo with the outside world, which can be neurotransmitters, hormones, or enzymes. The cell isn't wasteful. It quickly recovers its lost membrane through endocytosis, ensuring everything stays in balance. Exocytosis is a big deal in the cellular world. It's responsible for things like nerve cells communicate using neurotransmitters. Hormones regulate your body's functions. For example, digestive enzymes breaking down food in your stomach. Immune cells fight off invaders by releasing substances, cleaning up the mess with waste product removal. So, there you have it, the exciting world of exocytosis. It's a bit like a carefully orchestrated performance that keeps your cells running smoothly and allows them to interact with the world around them. Before concluding the video, Let's take a closer look at the fundamental distinctions that set endocytosis and exocytosis apart. Endocytosis, the first player in this cellular duo, is all about bringing stuff into the cell. It's like the cell's way of ingesting substances from its surroundings. Now, let's meet the second player, exocytosis. This process is all about exporting substances out of the cell. It's like the cell's way of shipping its products. There are different types of endocytosis, like phagocytosis, pinocytosis, and receptor-mediated endocytosis, while exocytosis has two main types, constitutive exocytosis and regulated exocytosis. Phagocytosis is the process of engulfing large particles or other cells, often for digestion. Pinocytosis is like the cell taking a sip, internalizing small droplets of fluid. Receptor-mediated endocytosis involves specific molecules binding to cell surface receptors and being taken in. Constitutive exocytosis involves the continuous release of substances, like waste and membrane components, without needing specific signals. Regulated exocytosis is controlled by signals or stimuli and is responsible for the precise release of specific substances, like neurotransmitters. The primary purpose of endocytosis is to help the cell with nutrient uptake, waste removal, and regulation of membrane composition. While exocytosis serves various purposes, including releasing hormones, neurotransmitters, enzymes, and other cellular products, as well as incorporating membrane proteins and lipids into the cell's outer layer. In a nutshell, 
Endocytosis is the process of bringing substances into the cell, while exocytosis is all about expelling substances from the cell. Together, they play vital roles in maintaining the cell's environment, communication, and responses to external cues. To view more educational videos, do not forget to subscribe. You can also click the bell icon to receive notifications when new videos are posted.